fill those empty seats. Here's how it has been done and can be done again. The cost in every case is trivial, and the coin that is invested returns to the box office every time. Look them over. Bally's, lobbies, stunts, windows, they'll fill those seats for you. Exhibitors Trade Review, January 24th, 1925. The illustrations are merely picturized suggestions of what you may do to increase interest in your theaters and arouse enthusiasm for your attractions. They may be adapted to your needs, and they will suggest other, and perhaps better, stunts to every alert showman. When Metro's The Arab played at the Strand Theater in Birmingham, Alabama, this Ballyhoo man not only paraded the streets in colorful costume, but through a local tie-up distributed some 2,000 samples of Mavis powder to pedestrians in the busiest sections. The increased business for both theater and the merchant with whom the tie-up was affected proved the plan okay. This is a variation of other wine lobby stunts, all of which have aroused interest and sometimes newspaper comment for showings of Universal's wine. Incidentally, this picture offered a good example of what may be done on a timely and topical tie-up, in this case with the popular 18th Amendment and the Phantom Fleet that was presumed to be offshore. A fashion review for children was staged at a Broadway New York theater during the run of Principal Pictures' production, Captain January. The review cost nothing, as it was put on by manufacturers of juvenile apparel, especially those who put out the products that have been named after Baby Peggy. There was a noticeable increase in the matinee business, as the review was especially interesting to women. Notice the use of 24 sheets on either side of this lobby that lured him in for Vitagraph's Captain Blood at the Rivoli Theater, Portland, Oregon. The three sheets and stills also helped materially, and the cost of the entire display was the price of some cardboard and paste. What did you do when you played this one? If you beat this lobby, let us know. Here's a Broadway New York window tie-up for the showing of Universal's The Fast Worker at the Broadway Theater. Joe Whale, Universal Exploiteer, affected this one, and put in the window cards which read, Reginald Denny says, Every fast worker needs an alarm clock. And, Buy an alarm clock today, and be the fast worker tomorrow. In Nashville, Tennessee, the manager of Lowe's Theater believes in the efficiency of window display tie-ups. When the Playhouse was showing First National's The Song of Love, this extra lobby helped business for the music store, and also for the picture. The window card tells the passersby that the photodrama is as wonderful as the glorious song it portrays. Here's a tie-up you can get through the Axton Fisher Tobacco Company, manufacturers of clown cigarettes. This one was put on for the showing of First National's The Perfect Flapper at the Knickerbocker Theater in Nashville, Tennessee. Needless to say, it attracted lots of attention to the theater and its attraction, as well as directing smokers to this brand of cigarettes. The Walking Book Bally is not climbing the marquee of the Howard Theater, Atlanta, Georgia, but both illustrations show the results of exploitation thought on the part of theater managers. The Married Flirts idea was used for the showing of that Metro picture at Lowe's Dayton Theater, while the Strangers of the Night float pulled them in when the Metro release played Atlanta. How was this for a clever disguise for the box office? It created much comment for the showing of Metro's The Navigator, in which the solemn comedian Buster Keaton is starred. The only requisite of such a display is an ounce of ingenuity, and a pound or so of real honest-to-goodness showmanship effort.